President's Life Portraits, 20th Anniversary Series. Next, a meeting on temporary spending for fiscal year 2000. The House Rules Committee met this evening to draft a rule that would allow for a three-week continuing resolution to be debated on the House floor. Friday, October 1st, is the scheduled start of the next fiscal year. The resolution would allow Congress to continue work on appropriations bills beyond the Friday deadline. The meeting's 50 minutes. The uh, Rules Committee will come to order, and let me uh, begin by uh, apologizing to the members of this committee. We had hoped to meet at 2 o'clock this afternoon, and I know uh, several members, specifically the ranking minority member, uh, made a uh, change in schedule uh, to be here for the 2 o'clock meeting. And let me uh, explain, as I did to him, the, uh, the problem. And uh, he has emboldened me to stand up for the interest of the Rules Committee, which I clearly uh, plan to do. But I I want to say that it, the reason we were meeting at 2 o'clock was that we had um, planned to have the Rules Committee consider the Energy and Water Appropriations Conference Report. And we had hoped that, the, uh, that at the end of last week we would have been able to obtain unanimous consent from members of the minority so that we could, in fact, uh, as we did today, proceed with consideration of the uh, Energy and Water Conference Report. Unfortunately, the minority refused to grant the unanimous consent request, and that was the reason that we were forced to schedule the 2 o'clock meeting so that we would, uh, in fact, be able to put it, uh, put it uh, on the uh, schedule for today. The second thing, of course, is that this is the, uh, the last week of the fiscal year, and uh, for that reason, I think members understand that uh, we're trying to complete, we're going to have a, a continuing resolution here. Uh, in just a moment, and we're trying to do as many appropriations bills and conference reports as we possibly can. So I just want the members to know that uh, that was what created the situation, that uh, we finally were able to get unanimous consent, and that uh, meant that we didn't have to have that meeting. Let me uh, say that we meet today to report a rule providing for a continuing resolution to keep the government working for the next three weeks. The fiscal year ends Thursday, but it isn't unusual for Congress to still be working on the 13 annual appropriations bills. As my uh, Democratic friends know, when they were in the majority, it was standard for these appropriations agreements to get hammered out with the President during October. In fact, even when uh, they controlled both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue, they uh, routinely used continuing resolutions to keep the federal government operating while they completed the appropriations process. The important difference today is that the Republican Congress fought hard for fiscal discipline based on the reality that a $1.7 trillion federal budget can accomplish our key national priorities without resorting to deficit spending. The result is the first two-year budget surplus since the 1950s. Now we're equally challenged to meet our budget needs without dipping into the Social Security surplus, which is key to providing long-term retirement security to millions of Americans. Just like with balancing the budget, this will require hard work and fiscal discipline. From day one of the 106 Congress, Republicans have been committed to protecting the Social Security surplus from being diverted to other spending programs. It's not always easy to do what's right when you're dealing with the President who's enticing the American people with a new poll-tested spending program that will further endanger Social Security and Medicare. Sitting here today, we remain focused on our nation's top priorities, saving Social Security and Medicare, restoring our national defense, improving public education, and providing tax relief to the people who've created the uh, over $3 billion, uh, over $3 trillion anticipated surplus. After nine months of work, we are well on our way, having passed a Social Security lockbox, the National Missile Defense Act, the Education Flexibility Act, a bipartisan Y2K litigation reform bill, and the uh, tax bill. So I want to thank very much the distinguished chairman of the uh, Committee on Appropriations. And uh, before we proceed, if there are any uh, comments that uh, <coughs> colleagues would like to be made. Mr. Moakley. Um, Mr. Chairman, it's true that while the Democrats were in power many years, that <clears throat> they did not finish their appropriations on time. <clears throat> but the last year we did, 1994, they were all finished by the end of September. And I thought that you people would then take a lead from 
from uh, last year and go from there. In fact, your, chair, your speaker said he was going to complete all the appropriation bills by August. One of them hasn't even been heard in committee yet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as long as you're giving some commercials out there, let's get that out on the, the floor, too. And that's one of the reasons we're here. We're trying our uh, darndest to get uh, this work completed. And uh, well, as, you know, as you know, that last appropriation bill is a very difficult one and uh, has been contentious. And we have the narrowest majority in nearly half a century. And we reported out, uh, as you know, uh, all of the other appropriations bills from the House. And uh, so it's true that we haven't quite met that deadline, and I think that the example of 1994 is nice to hold up, but in fact, there were many, many years when the uh, challenge of getting the appropriations work done extended for a uh, long period of time. Well, you know that even though we did have the majority for a long time, I don't think we ever closed the government down for more than one day, mm -hmm. and I just hope that the actions of your party won't Mr. Go Young to is sitting closing. here. Mr. Young is sitting here right now to make sure that we don't have to shut the government down. Well, I'm down. glad to That's see Mr. Young. But right now, uh, Mr. Chairman, there's one appropriation bill signed in the law. There's three more waiting in the president's desk. One of which he promised to veto. There's seven bills in conference. And HUD VA HUD is still waiting in action for the Senate. And Labor HHS has not even departed its original committee. So we still got some. Problems, and that's that's why you had to come down from Boston early, so we can make sure. But I think we could have come down at five or six o'clock rather than two o'clock and wait down here four well, again, hours. For again, meeting. again, uh, one of those you you want to get that work accomplished, and so I'm very pleased that we finally got uh, your gang to uh, give us unanimous consent to proceed with the conference report, so we can get it right to the president's Mr. desk. Mr. Chairman, I'm really I'm, I really don't care about myself. I just feel sorry for all these fellows in C-SPAN that had to wait around all this time waiting to get your picture. Mm, yeah, well. I suspect it wasn't worth the wait, but... Uh, I don't think so. Either. Yeah. With that, I think it's time for us to recognize the distinguished chairman of the Appropriations Committee, Mr. Young. We're happy to have you. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Moakley, thank you very much, and all the members of the committee. Uh, I was also here at 2 o'clock. Uh, there were... Uh, I guess there were some real reasons why we couldn't do it at 2 o'clock, but anyway, we're doing it at 7 o'clock. We're only, only five hours late. But you were here, and I was here, and... Uh, we just didn't get to it. But I'm here to ask for a rule uh, for H.J. Res. 67, which is a continuing resolution. Uh, we all understand what that is. It is a clean resolution. Uh, there, uh, there are no Christmas tree ornaments added to it. And I suspect that's the way it will be when it goes through the House and through the uh, Senate. Uh, and we've, we have circulated this with the, uh, the Republican leadership, the Democratic leadership, and the White House, uh, as well as the leadership in the Senate. Uh, everyone is uh, willing to sign off on the, on this bill. Uh, my speaker originally wanted the bill to go to the 29th of October. The president wanted it to go to the 15th of October. Uh, so we have a CR here that goes to the 21st, which is a, a, a split between the 15th and the 29th. Uh, the, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a straight, clean resolution. It does, uh, you have a copy of the bill, you have a copy of the resolution. And I would, would say to the, uh, to the committee, Mr. Chairman, that your Appropriations Committee has been very diligent, uh, the members of both parties. Uh, the House has been diligent. We've passed all but one bill, as, you, as Mr. Moakley pointed out and as Mr. Chairman, you pointed out. Uh, and the, the ones that we're, we are in conference on now <coughs> were ones that the Senate was rather late in passing. And as you know, under the, under the general order, you can't go to conference until both houses pass the bills. Now, Interior, and VA HUD have just now passed the Senate, and on tomorrow we will appoint conferees. We passed those bills some time ago, uh, but we couldn't appoint conferees until uh, the Senate passed them. <coughs> and the, the weak spot here is Labor HHS. The subcommittee's marked it up. Uh, we'll go to the full committee uh, on the 30th. Uh, and uh, that, that's, that's my case. Uh, our, our intent is to uh, keep the government running. We uh, never had any intention of closing down the government, including in 1995. But uh, things happened there that, in, in effect, were beyond our control, actually. Uh, but the, our intention is to keep the government running, and uh, we will have these appropriations bills uh, moving as soon as we can complete these conferences. Thank you very much, and congratulations on your fine work. Mr. Obie. 
Well, here we are again. No, I think it's the first time since I've been here doing this job. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not going to miss much anyway, John. Don't worry about it. As long as you're here, you may as well let everybody know you're here again. Were you, right. were you here at 2 o'clock also? <laughs> no, I was confused someplace else. Well, maybe um, that's the reason we couldn't convene at 2 o'clock. Ms. Groby wasn't available at 2. No. We just blame him. Uh, well, that often uh, that often happens, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be the case, uh, Mr. Chairman. I think we have no choice but to uh, support the continuing resolution at this point, um, uh, so long as it remains unadorned. Uh, if it does, I think that creates a problem for us both in the House or uh, when it comes back from the Senate. But uh, uh, I don't know what uh, Mr. Young has said. Uh, we need, need this because while energy and water just passed on a bipartisan basis, uh, D.C. Uh, 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 is not signed. It's been vetoed. Transportation um, uh, has yet to go to conference. Uh, foreign operations is in conference, uh, but is not in signable shape even if it uh, emerges from conference and the administration has made quite clear they will veto that uh dod is tied up uh, there's a very strong uh, dispute between uh, mr stevens and mr lewis on uh, the f-22 for instance and there are a good many other items which are still hanging that bill up uh, va hud uh, probably is not in a signable position with its existing allocation. Uh, I don't know if that's going to get worked out or not. Interior is hung up with the same old uh, laundry list of, of anti-environmental riders that have been added in the Senate. Uh, uh, the House bill was kept relatively free, as I recall, but the Senate has uh, uh, been the Senate <laughs> on this. And, uh, uh, State Justice Commerce is in deep trouble, nowhere near having a conferenceable, much less a signable bill. And Labor H has been um, uh, really gutted in order to make uh, the other uh, 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 bills even mildly passable. You need to understand that with all of the rhetoric that's going on about uh, preserving Social Security, the fact is that uh, Every dime of the non-Social Security uh, uh, surplus has already been spent by uh, various appropriation bills which have gone through, and a significant amount of uh, money within the Social Security surplus has already been spent. So don't let anybody kid you that anybody's going to be drawing a line to protect Social Security. In fact, that line has already been breached by bills that the House has passed. And my guess is by the time you uh, uh, total up uh, how much it's been breached and how much it's likely to be breached, you will be well above $25 billion. Uh, in, in fact, if you use uh, CBO's estimates, uh, the bills passed by the House and the bills that the leadership has indicated its intention to, uh, to pass uh, would indicate that uh, it has already been breached to the tune of 36 to 38 billion dollars if you use um, uh, OMB's estimate of how much that's already been breached uh, you would come up with an estimate of 26 to 28 billion dollars so it depends on whose traffic cop you believe as to who as to what what the uh, size of the breach is so at this point um, uh, uh, that uh, Rubicon has already been crossed, uh, and uh, we are now <coughs> trying to uh, prevent the Congress from being totally wrapped around the axle <coughs> in terms of uh, the rest of these bills. I hope that uh, uh, this three weeks additional time will enable us to pass uh, uh, most of the other bills, but frankly, I'm dubious because I think that there has been uh, uh, such a uh, confrontation mode to develop on these bills that uh, uh, that uh, I'm afraid that we're going to see a number of additional extensions. I personally would not uh, 
to be surprised to see us here uh, into, into Thanksgiving and into Christmas. I hope that I'm dead wrong on that. But uh, you know what Archie the Cockroach said? He said, an optimist is a guy who ain't had much experience. And uh, when it comes to CRs, I've had enough experience to know that uh, uh, we are in a very tough uh, situation here. And uh, uh, until uh, the Congress sits down and starts talking directly with the White House on these issues, uh, I'm afraid you're going to see a, a game where people are playing baseline ping pong. And that's not going to help resolve uh, very many of these bills. Thank you very much, Mr. Obi. I have no questions. Mr. Goss? Thank you very much. My understanding is that what we're asking for is a continuing resolution that uh, will keep us at a status quo situation, uh, and it will do so until the 21st of October. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct, Mr. Goss. And my understanding further is that we have had a surplus this year of some $110 billion or something like that. And so, therefore, this is not quite as. Uh, frightening your prospect of keeping the status quo as it has been in the past when we had uh, I think I just read something this afternoon where the president said the surplus was 115 billion well the status quo then is better than it sometimes is thank you very much and we have had a uh, we had a very difficult year because the budget the balanced budget act of 97 uh, provided your appropriators 17 billion dollars less uh, than was appropriated the year before that's the first time that has happened in my memory uh, that we have had that we had less than the year before to appropriate. So. Uh, well, I think it's. Uh, I think you both should be congratulated for getting 12 out of 13 bills out plus a supplemental under those circumstances. Thank well, you. the House has done very well. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Moakley. Mr. Chairman, uh, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't actually the cockroach, but somebody told me that the president wasn't interested in signing any CI that would extend over two weeks. Is he signed off on this one? What the president has indicated, I'm informed, is that uh, he very much would prefer two weeks. Uh, uh, the administration, I think, shares my concern that if you have uh, a three-week extension, that it takes people a week and a half before they begin to focus on how little time they have left. And, uh, and uh, so I think he's dubious that it's wise to, uh, to let it drift in this law. He, uh, the White House has indicated to me that they are willing very reluctantly uh, to move uh, along with this one so long as it remains on the dorm. But that uh, 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 from here on out, uh, they're not going to sign uh, uh, CRs uh, that continue to drift this thing uh, uh, forever and ever, but they intend to keep us on a very short leash, and I think they're right. I think they should. Well, Mr. Chairman, the White House doesn't have to keep us on a short lease, leash. Uh, and we did circulate this resolution to the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to the leadership of both parties in both the House and the Senate, as well as the White House. Uh, the 21st date was a compromise between the speakers date of the 29th and the president's date of the 15th. Uh, there's nothing changed in the bill except except that date. Uh, but let me tell you why I think that the 21 days is smarter than 15. We know that we're locked up in conference over a number of very sticky issues with the Senate. Uh, and I don't think that we need to spend our time doing one CR after another. And this was mentioned early on, uh, Mr. Chairman, and you and Mr. Mowgli both mentioned this, but let me, let me give you a little history on CRs. The last year that the Democrats were the majority party in the Congress, they had three CRs for a total of 41 days. No. Yes, absolutely. Bill, I'm yeah. sorry if you'd yield. I was the chairman for one year before the Congress uh, flipped to Republican control. That was fiscal year 95. That was the only year that we finished all of the bills on time. Uh, and that's not so. In fiscal year 97, under the Republican leadership, we also uh, finished the bills on time. But in fiscal year 94, which is your last... Uh, five year C you had a five-bill CR. I understand that. Fiscal year 94, you had three CRs, 41 days. Fiscal year 93, you did better. 
you only had a five-day CR. Fiscal year 92, you had three CRs for a total of 57 days. Fiscal year 91, you had five CRs for a total of 36 days. Fiscal year 90, you had three CRs for a total of 51 days. And then, Mr. Chairman, you might find this interesting. Uh, most of you on this committee weren't here at the time of Mr. Roby and I were, Mr. Moakley was, but in 1974, the majority party couldn't get the work done on time. So in the Budget Act, they changed the fiscal year. They just added three months to the fiscal year. Uh, so CRs are not something uh, out of the, uh, just out of the blue. Uh, the CRs have happened. Uh, and there's a good reason for this, and we don't have time to get into that tonight. But I'm going to have a recommendation to you later on uh, to change the way that we appropriate and, uh, and the, the uh, budget, whole budgeting process. Because when you add up the time that, that Mr. Roby and I have had to do appropriations bills this year, we lost October because we were dealing with that great omnibus appropriations bill last year. November was election. And then we started impeachment, which took us through December. And in January, we sat here and waited, well, we sat wherever we were, and waited till the president's budget arrived here. In February, we got a chance to do some staff work and look at the budget. We didn't even get started on our justification hearings until March. Then we were out two weeks at Easter, and then we were out two weeks in the 4th of July, and then we were out the month of August, so Mr. Rovi and I and our Appropriations Committee had about five months to do a full year's worth of appropriations. Now, that's not enough time, because we have to deal with every aspect of the federal government. And we need more than five months a year to deal with it. That's why we have CRs. And then, of course, when you go to work with the Senate, uh, oftentimes you find a senator who has to have it his way or walks out. And when you walk out, there's no negotiations until you get them back at the table. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would simply say, uh, with all due respect, I think the chairman of the committee is confusing fiscal years with calendar years. The fact is that I was chairman of the Appropriations Committee the last year the Democrats were in control. And for the first time in a generation, we finished every bill on time. There was no need for a CR. There was no need for an omnibus appropriation bill. And the reason that happened was not because I was so smart. The reason it happened is because for the only time in congressional history, rather than waste eight months in partisan sniping and posturing, the dad became chairman. I walked across the aisle, I sat down with my ranking Republican member, and I worked out a bipartisan allocation of money, the 302 process, between all of the 13 subcommittees, so that we would agree from the start how much was going to go in each and every subcommittee. That's why we finished every bill on time. In contrast, this year, we had seven bills that came out of the Appropriations Committee on a bipartisan basis under Mr. Young's chairmanship. And then each time they were hijacked by elements of the majority party caucus, which decided that they would rather have a more ideological bill to finance their tax cuts rather than to have appropriation bills which uh, would uh, gain support from the great middle in the House on both sides of the aisle. And so instead, we wound up cannibalizing education, health, and, uh, and uh, worker protection programs in order to pretend that there was enough uh, funding in the bill early on to pass uh, the early appropriation bills. Even that scheme did not work, which is we're now here with our work uh, not done. So to me, uh, I hadn't wanted to get into this, but since uh, uh, Chairman Young has uh, has characterized uh, what happened uh, the last year we were in control. I know what happened the last year we were in control. That was the only time uh, that the system worked the way it was supposed to work, and it worked because we insisted on dealing with it on a bipartisan uh, basis, something which has not happened in the last five years. And that's really Mr. <coughs> Because but, but David, I, I, finished, I, acknowledge, I acknowledge fiscal year 95, there was no CR for fiscal year 95. That was the year that, uh, that you were chaired. That's right. Also, you didn't have uh, the budget restrictions uh, then because the Budget Act of 97 hadn't been passed yet. And there was a Budget Act of 97 that provided us $17 billion less 
than we had the year before. You had more money to spend that year than you had the year before. Whose budget act was it, Mr. Chairman? When you have more money, that makes it easier. Whose budget act was it? No, no, the, the balance, balance budget was. It brought us the but balance the budget. The 1993 tax bill is the one that brought, it brought us the balance budget. I don't think there's any point. 93? I don't think there's any point in squabbling about this. What we ought to be talking about is what we're going to do, uh, what we're going to be doing from today forward to get the well, job that's, done. That's what we ought to That's do. what I'd like to talk about. The thing that uh, confuses me a little bit is uh, where you say that the president isn't going to to entertain too many C CRs. I just don't see this work being done in 21 days. Uh, what's going to happen at the end of 21 days? Well, uh, I think that depends, frankly, on the attitude of the Congress. Uh, uh, I don't believe that uh, these 21 days will buy us anything valuable if the majority party in the House continues to, uh, to uh, uh, insist on passage of a labor, health, and education bill, for instance, which uh, cuts two and a half billion dollars out of the president's education priorities, <coughs> which cuts uh, uh, deeply into worker protection programs, uh, uh, which uh, insists that the low-income heating assistance program, which has only been around since 1975, be treated as an emergency appropriation, uh, as though we suddenly discovered that it gets cold in the wintertime. Uh, that, that, if you want to talk about uh, uh, problems for the future, that bill alone, through gimmicks, through budgetary gimmicks, will leave us with a $20 billion hole next year. And that is out of a bill that is roughly $92 billion with all of the financing gimmicks they, uh, that they are using through delayed appropriations and all the rest. And again, I don't blame my friend Bill Young for this. Uh, this is a, this is a, uh, situ a, he is faced with two dilemmas. One is that the Budget Act of, 90, uh, of three years ago, in my view, was always and continues to be a public lie. Secondly, uh, when you add to that uh, the, uh, uh, the additional uh, uh, reductions that are required in these programs in order to fund uh, the tax bill that's been hanging around here for months. I mean, Mr. Mr. Young read the schedule. Our, the reason we're here with this work not being done is because the Congress did spend uh, its first three months on impeachment. And after impeachment, it spent the next five months uh, trying to push through a tax bill that everyone understood would rob us of the opportunity to deal with Social Security, with Medicare, with education, with health care. And uh, that's why the public indicated they weren't, they weren't for it, at least not certainly in that size. And uh, if we hadn't had those two uh, 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 diversions, uh, we might have been able to talk to each other enough to get a uh, bipartisan consensus. But clearly, uh, Bill tried to get a bipartisan consensus on a number of bills, and uh, that was vetoed by other elements in his caucus. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. Let me, uh, at, at the opening of this hearing, I talked about the challenge of trying to uh, deal with the last week before the end of the fiscal year. We're going to have to recess this hearing because uh, after um, you all reintroduce that. So the uh, committee stands in recess. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, can you tell us what the modification is since we've been waiting all these hours? Well, they still have to come back. If uh, why don't we why don't we before we recess go through and at least have comments made by other members, Mr. Frost and others on this, and then we will um, following this recess and address uh, this issue, and I will um, discuss it. So, uh, Mr. Linder, Mr. Frost, uh, Mr. Obi, yeah, I I have a. We seem to have some some uh, sidebar conversations, but I, I do have a question for Mr. Obi. Um, Mr. Obi, at the beginning of this hearing, before you were in the room, uh, the chairman of this committee made a pretty little speech about how the Republicans don't want to spend the Social Security surplus. Now, you testified that 
they've already spent somewhere between 25 and 35 billion of the Social Security surplus uh, by policies that they've adopted. Would you break that down as to sure. who's right about this? Is the chairman right that they don't want to do this, or are you right that they've already spent 25 or 35 billion dollars of the Social Security surplus? I don't think you should take his word or mine. I think you should take the word of the people we hire to serve as the neutral referees at the Congressional Budget Office. The head of the Congressional Budget Office uh, uh, was hired by the Republican leadership of the Congress. And these are the numbers that you can extrapolate from uh, what they produced. They told us in the mid-session review in July that there would be a $14 billion uh, surplus. Uh, and uh, that was based on the assumption that Congress will remain within the outlay caps <coughs> discretionary spending. The August 26 uh, letter uh, from CBO indicates that CBO now believes the House appropriations allocations for non-emergency spending are already $17 billion above those caps, and Senate allocations are $16 billion above those caps. That turns that $14 billion surplus in the non-Social Security portion of the budget into a 2 to $3 billion deficit. Then if you add to that emergency designations for the census contained in the House bill, uh, uh, even if that is de uh, declared an emergency, it is still money that is spent. It is still money which is outlaid. That raises uh, the non-Social Security, uh, I mean, that raises the Social Security deficit to six to seven billion dollars. Then what, uh, what the uh, committee has done is acting as though that $14 billion July uh, surplus was still available. They've allocated another $14 billion to uh, the various uh, bills in the appropriations process. Uh, that pushes the deficit up to 20 to $21 billion under CBO scoring. Mm -hmm. In addition, the Republican leadership has indicated they intend to pass supplementals that will total somewhere between 12 and $15 billion in budget authority, and that will translate into about $10 billion in actual outlays, which is what will actually be spent. So uh, that pushes the deficit in the, uh, 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 in the budget to $31 billion. That's Social Security uh, yes. surplus. And then... The Social Security portion of the budget. That's right. Then if you uh, recognize that they are talking about passing uh, up to three billion dollars in tax extenders and when you recognize also that they are planning to pass Medicare buyback uh, to fix some of the problems that have developed from the 97 budget deal mm -hmm. uh, and that will cost an additional two or two billion dollars or so you are up to at least 34 to 36 billion dollars if you go by CBO's counting and if you go by OMB's counting the White House counting uh, uh, that's uh, 26 to 28 billion dollars. There are a couple of other items in the mix which could add to or subtract to those numbers slightly, but that's basically the story. So the Republicans have already spent, arguably, 36 billion dollars of the Social Security surplus. They've either spent or indicated their intention to spend that amount of the Social Security surplus. Yeah, thank you. That's very, very helpful. Tell us what the modification is. <coughs> but we know that but one is coming. Uh, and I, I will explain uh, that there is a uh, provision that um, a minority member of the United States Senate has raised uh, of concern. Uh, the White House had language that was uh, designed to accommodate and address the uh, concern. Uh, I am told dealing with oil royalty language uh. in the continuing resolution. And uh, we have to address that before this committee can proceed. Yes, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Obey, I would like to uh, delve further on some of the statements that you provided to us today. And I will be honest, I have not checked with the White House. As you suggest, we should probably work closer. And I don't know whether you have had the opportunity. I presume you have to work with them 
on this issue are you suggesting to me then that the president wants us to spend less money so that we do not do these outrageous things that we've been told evidently are ahead that have not happened yet but that are ahead that we would not spend social security before mr Obie proceeds let me just say that uh, chairman young needs to leave right now to deal with this uh, situation so we're going to excuse him now thank you uh, uh, Ms. Sessions. Mr. Chairman, as I told you, I was not aware of this. This was coming. It, if, if, I could, if I could explain this other item, uh, this involves the Hutchinson Amendment, which tries to extend the ban on the administration's uh, producing new rules uh, affecting the amount of money uh, that uh, oil companies. Uh, um, well, the question is whether, is, is, is whether the oil companies are keeping accurate track of their royalties or not on federal lands. The administration was contemplating a new rule uh, which they thought would save the taxpayers about $60 million a year. The issue was whether if the CR, uh, because, because the uh, last year's prohibition on, on implementing that rule had a date certain, that meant that come October 1, uh, uh, you might have had the possibility that the administration could implement the new rule. As I understand it, uh, the original CR simply intended to uh, contain explicit language which gave uh, the authority to continue that moratorium. My understanding is that uh, the lawyers have now discovered a letter which makes clear that uh, the same conditions would apply with the extension of this, and so you don't need that other language. I think that's the only, uh, it's just, a, as I understand it, a technical uh, difference on this issue, which is what. And we're hoping that it can be addressed just on. as quickly as possible, so we'll be able to reconvene and report out the CR so we can bring it up tomorrow. And Mr. Obey, you were responding to Mr. Sessions' uh, question, and thank you very much, Mr. Young. The, but to answer Mr. Sessions, uh, no, I was, uh, I did not. You did not hear me make any uh, uh, statement about the advisability or inadvisability of the expenditures that are being uh, that have already been provided oh, by the appropriations and, and I, committee. And I think that's what correct. I was simply, what I was simply responding to was the Republican assertion that somehow you are going to draw a line between Social Security and non-Social Security, and that you were going to guarantee that no Social Security. Uh, 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 that no funds from the Social Security uh, surplus were going to be spent this year. And my point is that if anyone makes that assertion, it's fraudulent because, because uh, the committee has already made decisions which make quite clear that uh, that has already been breached. Well, it is my understanding that, that the lockbox, and you may <coughs> correct me, that the lockbox, which would have specified in law, was vetoed by the president last week, and that that would have had legislation that said we will not spend. Now, remembering, we have not spent next year's money yet. Well, all I can say is that the actions taken by the Appropriations Committee that spent this money were taken long before the President ever uh, had that lockbox and so his my desk to suggest that somehow that veto prevented you from uh, uh, doing what you wanted to do is, I think, a ludicrous... Uh, well, then let me take you a little bit further down the road. Isn't the problem we're not spending enough money? No, I think the problem is we're spending money in the wrong places. I don't agree, for instance, that we ought to be spending half a billion dollars to give the majority leader in the Senate a new ship that the Navy never asked for. I certainly don't agree that, uh, that in addition to paying for that money this year, uh, that we should forward fund the rest of the cost for that ship. That's half a billion dollars in money. I don't think and, we should spend. And just like we had discussions earlier in the year where we knew we were funding a war that would take money out at the end. All I'm suggesting well, is I we would, are now where we are. And so what I hope we can do is find a way to where the president will let us know. I'd like to be able to, not me cutting the deal, but I think that Congress should be forthright and the president saying we're going to find a way to work together to avoid a shutting down of the government. We're going to keep working together and we're going to make sure we don't spend one penny of Social Security 
and then we've heard from the president where he stands all this and then we are able to come back and work within those conference well, com compass and i don't think today we believe at least on this side uh, of the house that we believe that that we believe that the president wants to spend more and more and more money and we'd love to i would love to aid and help out our effort to make sure we don't spend Social well, Security with, to have the president be there, too. With all due respect, the president does not have a vote in the Congress. The president didn't cast one vote for or against any of these appropriation bills. That's true, but you've suggested it, it, we took time to listen to the president, and so I'm trying to find out well, from you, who is a negotiator well, on behalf of the president, what would happen. Well, I, I'm not going to... Uh, how do I know what will happen? What I can tell you is what has happened. <laughs> And your party leadership has already rammed through the House bills that have spent more than $20 billion of that Social Security surplus. And it's also indicated it intends to support supplementals, which will spend another $10 billion. So I'm saying that when your majority leader goes on ABC News tonight and tells the American people that uh, you're going to draw a firm line to make sure that Social Security monies aren't spent, that's a fraudulent statement because that money has already been spent under the specific direction of that same majority leader and the same party leadership. But it's not been signed into law. Well, are you asking the president to save you from yourself? No, I'm asking that we get a clear... I was asking you if you had a clear understanding about where the president was. And, and does the president, he... The president sent down his uh, budget... Uh, uh, in January, it contained uh, numerous That budget got boards. two votes. Well, the, the, that, it, two votes. You may not like that. That wasn't even realistic. Well, I don't think we should go back to it you now. Could, you can characterize it any way you want. The fact is he paid for, he suggested pay fors for his budget. If you don't like it, then you need to come up with other pay fors so that it will keep you within the, the parameters you say you want to stay in. But all I, my assertion is simply that if anybody believes that the, that the Social Security uh, line has, a, has not already been breached, I would urge that you pick up the phone and call the Congressional Budget Office. Your party appointed the director of that office, and they make quite clear you have already breached it in your own appropriations. So all I'm saying to you is let's cut out the phony baloney about how people are committing not to breach a but, line which has already been breached. But you missed the point here. I don't think the point so. is, if we do live within exactly what we said, the president, and you and I know it, wants to veto it because it's not enough spending. Well, and that's the whole point of what we're trying to get at. That's why we shouldn't be shutting down the government. If we lived within, we're being pressured to spend more and more. <laughs> I'd like to find out that the president does want us to stick to I not spending I didn't vote to add $10 billion more to the defense budget than the president asked for. You did. Well, in the scheme of things, I'd like to be able to know that we as, as adults could work it through and not spend Social Security, and we could sure so, use some help from a person who is part of the, the system. So would also. I. All I can tell you is that uh, uh, it's a little late to worry about that after you've already spent close to $30 billion. Well, it, not a penny has been spent for next year yet, and you know that. Well, so are you suggesting we should not approve that, that you should not no, have voted for any of the bills that no, you voted for? No, I, I think what I'm suggesting is, is that we would like to... I think that what is holding all this effort up is that we're trying to avoid a veto, and the veto is there because we're not spending enough money. Well, I, with all due respect, I think uh, the, the gentleman is going in circles. Uh, it was not the Democrats who passed the bills in the House. It was the Republican leadership. And, and uh, this, this some of those bills, I think, made sense, and some of them, I think, did not make sense. It, it's simply but a good reason why we ought to not spend a penny uh, of Social uh, Security. Well, what you're trying to suggest is that it's the president's threat of a veto which has prevented you from doing uh, what you've already done. Uh, I don't follow that logic. Good. Well, then we'll, we'll try and follow through with that because I, I don't think we should play chicken with each other on this. What's in balance is the threat of a shutdown of the government, and I think reasonable people can work it out. I'm simply trying to ask, will the president be of support of us to give us r what is right and to say we shouldn't spend Social Security. It's a great signal the to a bunch of people who are in here working, men and women trying in, to work together. The president cannot defend Social Security and agree with you at the same time uh, because you are going in opposite directions. Uh, you have already spent that money. Well, see, that's the whole point that I've been trying to make. If we could get some help to get some structure to say we should not spend Social Security, then well, I think it could be easily I mean, accomplished. We can keep 
we can keep chewing on this cut all night long if you want. You've the answered fact, the question the fact for is, me. You folks control this place. You push the bills through this place that have already committed well over $20 billion of Social Security surplus uh, to appropriation bills. We didn't do that. You demanded we spend $10 billion more on defense. We didn't do that. You are supporting adding more money for uh, the majority leaderships uh, than the Navy wants. We didn't do that. Uh, uh, I didn't vote to uh, put the highway bill out of reach from budget constraints. Uh, uh, you may have. I did not. So with all due respect, uh, 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 and I would say Mr. Young, the appropriations chairman, uh, has done everything possible to try to avoid this partisan box. He brought to his credit seven bills in a row out of subcommittee that we were willing to support on a bipartisan basis. And then each time the cats in your caucus uh, blew up the bill and said, oh, we don't like this. Uh, it's, uh, 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 it, is, it does not meet our idea of what is, uh, what is budgetarily pure. And so you produced bills which were uh, uh, very much more partisan. And as a result, you're wrapped around the axle on bill after bill after bill. And it is right now arguments between Republicans in the Senate and Republicans in the House that are continuing to hold these bills up. You can't blame the president for vetoing bills that haven't even gotten to him yet. The only bill that got to him that he vetoed was the District of Columbia bill. And that bill contained a provision which said that the district couldn't use its own money to pursue the right of American citizens living in the District of Columbia to be represented in this body. That's the only bill the president has vetoed so far with ample justification. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Reynolds. Chairman, I thank the ranking member for uh, his explanation and the chairman before it. I'm, I'm an optimist that believes that with the 21 days of continuing resolution as we send that to the floor, that the Appropriations Committee is continuing its work, uh, and then the uh, uh, conference reports uh, behind that, that we will finish our work in a timely fashion. And the president will have as uh, his responsibility under his constitution authority uh, to deliberate over whether to sign into law or veto those uh, appropriations and we'll continue getting our work done. I think the most important thing is that we continue rolling up our sleeves, the Republican and Democrat, Senate and the other house, uh, as we uh, complete the task at hand that the people <laughs> sent us here to do. And uh, I'm optimistic to believe that it'll happen. Uh, I also believe when a majority is only five members, there's a lot of finger pointing. There's a finger pointing in the New York State Assembly when there are 98 Democrats and 52 Republicans. So I expect that with only five here, there's finger pointing on who's right, who's wrong, and how it's going to get done. But as an optimist of uh, being a legislator 25 years, I believe we'll get the job done and uh, it'll result in a, uh, a budget that uh, the American people will measure that uh, will satisfy the year 2000. Thank you. Let me just say that uh, you obviously did not hear the brilliant words of Archie the Cockroach on optimism, which Mr. Obi uh, offered earlier. And it doesn't apply in your case because you were very experienced, having been minority leader of the uh, state legislature. So let me just say that uh, we um, appreciate your being here, and we're hoping to be able to reconvene the committee in... Uh, I hope about 30 minutes or so. And one of the reasons, or the, the reason that we are in fact recessing is to accommodate uh, some concerns that have been raised. So with that, the committee stands in recess. reconvene. Uh, we are here for further consideration of the continuing uh, appropriations bill for fiscal year 2000. And uh, we have adjourned the hearing. And uh, we have a new bill that is before us. And with that, we will be in receipt of a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the committee grant a rule providing for consideration of HJRS 6A, making continuing appropriations for fiscal year 2000. 
The rule weighs all points of order against consideration of the joint resolution. The rule also provides one hour of general debate equally divided and controlled by the chairman and ranking minority member of the Committee on Appropriations. Finally, the rule provides one motion to recommit. So move, Mr. Chairman. You've heard the motion of the uh, gentleman from Florida. Any discussion? No Mr. discussion. Uh, if not, the uh, vote occurs on the motion of the gentleman from Sanibel. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. May the chair, the ayes have it. The ayes have it. And uh, I will be managing this measure for the majority. And I'll be managing and Mr. For, the minority. for the minority. We look forward to seeing you uh, on the floor tomorrow. And we will be meeting at 1 o'clock tomorrow uh, afternoon for uh, consideration of the Foreign Operations Appropriations Bill and, and the Crop Insurance uh, Reform Bill. So with that, the committee stands adjourned until 1 o'clock tomorrow. House returns tomorrow morning at 9 Eastern for morning hour speeches, 10 o'clock for legislative business. Members plan to debate a bill on health research. Also, a continuing resolution to keep the federal government funded beyond October 1st.